cash is affected, we sold our treasury stock for cash. And therefore, cash has a debit balance. We're going to make it go up by doing the same thing to it, which in this case would be another debit. So I'm going to copy the cash, right click and copy the cash. We're going to put that on top in H11, right click and paste one, two, three. And the cash that we're going to, that we will be receiving is this 45,000. We could do the calculation one more time. I'll do the calculation here and it's going to be equal to the 15, 100 shares times $30 we sell it for, meaning we get the 45,000. Uh, so then what's gonna, what's gonna be the credit? Well, what are we selling? We're selling treasury stock. And note, again, it looks like any other kind of stock in that it's a debit balance account. It, it, I mean, if it was any other type of stock, it would also be a debit balance. But unlike if we bought stock in another company, it would be up here a debit balance account in the asset section. Down here, it's a debit balance account in the contra uh, equity section is a contra equity account because it's really our own stocks so it has a debit in it we need to make it go down by the portion that we sold therefore we're going to do the opposite thing to it which in this case is a credit so i'm going to copy that i'm going to put that down here and right click and paste it one two three and then we're going to post the amount and once again the amount's going to be this uh 37 five but we can do the calculation one more time the calculation i'm going to put a negative to make it a negative number and it's going to be the one five shares that we sold times the cost which remember was 25 so times 25 and it's going off the books for that 37.5 then of course our debits do not equal our credits if we highlight those we can see that in the taskbar we're off by 7005 we need a credit to even this out i'm going to do that with what i call the plug formula or plug formula which is a negative and then sum so I'm going to negative sum, so I'm going to sum these up, and then the negative, instead of an equal sign, will flip the sign. So it's going to make it a, it would have been a positive 7.5, flip the sign to a negative 7.5, therefore the two credits now add up to the debits. If we add up the positive number of debits minus the negative number of credits, adds up to zero. And where are we going to post this amount then? That's kind of <laughs> the uh, problem in this case. Now where, where does that go? We need to even this thing out. And we are going to have, in this case, an account called uh, Paid in Capital Treasury Stock. So that's where we're going to post this out. I'm going to copy this. And I'm going to paste that one, two, three right here. All right, so now let's post this out. So we got the cash first. We're going to post the cash. Cash is here. It's going to be here on the trial balance. We're going to post it to the middle section in N7. Something's in it. Therefore, we're going to double click on it. We're going to go to the end of it and say plus then point to this 45,000 this is a debit that's a debit those are the same therefore it's going to go up in the debit direction then we can post the treasury stock so here's the treasury stock here's the treasury stock remember it's in the equity section we're going to double click on the middle in uh 12 cell because something's in it double clicking go to the end of it and plus and click on the uh 37 5 that's a credit this is a debit and that means they're opposites and it's going to go down then we're going to take the paid in capital here. Here's the paid in capital here. We're going to go to the posting column in N13. And we're going to say this equals and then point to this 7.5. And that's going to make this go up in uh, the credit direction. So as long as we still have the treasury stock on the books, we could have this paid in capital. If we pay off all the treasury stock, then we're going to have to reduce that paid in capital to zero uh, because that paid in capital account is, of course, related <laughs> to the treasury stock. All right, let's go back over here and see the next transaction. We have the next transaction being on 8.22. Sold treasury stock. So we sold more of the treasury stock on 8.22. I'm going to put that over here. 8.22. We sold the amount of 3,005 shares and at $20 this time. So we sold it at $20, which we can see now is going to be a loss because we bought it for $25, remember? So we're going to have a loss on it. Let's calculate that loss. So now we sold 3.5 down here in this worksheet and we sold it for um, a sales price in this case of 20 therefore we're going to say this equals the number of shares 35 times 20 we're going to receive cash of 70,000 then let's calculate the cost side of it those same 35 shares that we are now selling cost us $25 and remember that was up here this 25 up here that's one and therefore, we're going to say this equals the 3,005 3, shares times 25. And that means that uh, they cost us 87,500. 
So now we have a loss. Let's calculate what that loss would be. It would be the 70,000 minus the 87.5. We have a loss of 17.5. Note we can also calculate that loss by saying let's take this 3.5 shares, multiply it times the difference of the cost 20 minus the sales price 25 meaning we're losing five dollars per share and if we did that calculation then we should come up with the same number three five oh oh times uh five and we get that seven seventeen five so that's another way we calculate that same seventeen five so let's post that out and think about that in terms of a journal entry so first question is cash affected yeah, we sold, uh, we sold it for cash. We sold our own treasury stock for cash. Uh, cash has a debit balance, therefore, and we need to make it go up. Therefore, we're gonna do the same thing to it, which in this case would be another debit. So we're gonna copy that. We're gonna put that on top in H15, right click and paste it, one, two, three. So the amount that we are going to receive, remember, is the 70,000. I'm gonna calculate it one more time. We're gonna say it equals the 3,005 shares we're gonna sell times the amount we're receiving per share of $20. So there we have it. What are we selling? Treasury stock. Once again, it's an, it's an debit balance account, which is would be very similar to if we sold other kinds of stock. However, it's down here in the equity section rather than in the asset section because it is uh, our own stock, Contra Equity Account. It has uh, 87.5 in it and notice we're gonna to have to take the entire amount out of it because we sold all of the treasury stock so so we know the credit is going to be 87.5 but we can also calculate it and we'll come up with the same 87.5 over here so in any case we know that this is a uh, debit we need to make it go down to zero therefore we're gonna do the opposite thing to it which will be a credit so I'm gonna copy this in L12 right click and copy we're going to post that in H16, right click and paste one, two, three. And once again, I, I'm going to do the calculation for us. We did it here. Let's do it one more time. I'm going to say this is a negative of 3,005 shares times $25, which is the cost per share, means we come up with that 87.5. Remember, we're selling all the ones that we had now because we had 5,000 on the books. We sold 15. Now we're selling the other 3.5 meaning we have no longer any treasury stocks. So this will take the treasury stocks completely off the books. Now, the tricky thing here is that if we take the treasury stocks completely off the books, we have to clean out the paid in capital because it wouldn't make sense for us to have a paid in capital account related to treasury stock if there's no treasury stock. So uh, when we completely eliminate the treasury stock, we need to also take the paid in capital off the books. Now you might be saying if I highlight these two, I say the 70 and the 87.5, we have a difference of 17.5. And the treasury stock only has 7,005 in it. So we can't, we're gonna have to do something other than that. We're gonna have to take this to zero and then we'll still have a plug that we're gonna have to put somewhere and that will go to the retained earnings. So let me show you what that'll look like. We, need, we know we need this to go to zero. And that is a credit balance. We need to make it go to zero. We're gonna do the opposite thing to it, which in this case would be a debit. So I'm gonna copy this in L13, right click copy, put this in H17, right click, paste it, one, two, three. We need to take it completely off the books for what it's on the books at, which is seven, five. So we'll debit it seven, five. Then we have a problem here because the debits don't equal the credits. It's off by 10,000. So the uh, debits are at 77.5, the credits are at 87.5. We need another 10,000 on the debit side. So I'm gonna do our negative sum function in order to calculate that 10,000 again equals uh, negative sum and then highlight these and that'll give us the 10 and flip the sign. And then if we highlight the debits, it adds up to 87.5 and if we highlight all of it, it adds up to zero. Now the only question is where are we gonna put that? And once again, that plug is basically just gonna to go to retained earnings. We're gonna put that into retained earnings. So I'm gonna copy retained earnings and I'm gonna put that in H18, right click and paste it one, two, three. All right, so let's post this out. We got the cash at 70. Here's the cash, here's the cash on the trial balance. We're gonna post it to the middle column. So we are in N7, I'm gonna double click on that. Go to the end of it, plus, 
and then click on the 70,000 and enter. Then we're gonna go to the treasury stock. So treasury stock is here. It is here on the trial balance. This is where we want to post it. We're gonna double click on that, go to the end of it, and plus and point to this 87.5 should take treasury stock down to zero. So we took treasury stock off the books. We have now sold all the shares. Then we're gonna post the paid in capital. Here's the paid in capital. Here it is on the trial balance. This is where we want to post it. Something's in it, so we're gonna double click on it, go to the end of it and plus, and then point to that 7.5. That should bring this balance down once again to zero. And then we need to plug this last retained earnings amount to this N14 uh, retained earnings on the trial balance, double clicking on it, go to the end of it and plus, point to the 10,000 and enter. All right, so there's that one. We have one more transaction and we have to stop this. And that's gonna be on 9.4, which says that we declared a dividend uh, per stockholder of a $2. So we have, we have another $2 dividend that we are now declaring. And what's gonna happen when we declare the dividend, if we think through it, we're gonna say, is cash affected? And in this case, no, it's not affected because we declared it, we have not yet paid it. Uh, therefore, what we have is an obligation. As of the date we declared the dividend, dividend we are obligated to pay it. Therefore, we have a, a dividend payable account and it is a liability account. The amount needs to go up because we owe more money. Liability accounts have credit balances in order to make it go up. We're gonna do the same thing to it, which in this case is another credit. So I'm gonna copy the payable going to put that on the bottom so that we can credit it right click and paste one two three so the amount that we're going to pay now and the question is you know how many shares are outstanding once again and we know we can see that we have the common stock of 500,000 par value of 10 so 500,000 divided by 10 means there's 50,000 shares and there are no treasury stocks outstanding at this time because this 5,000 that we purchased we sold back here, which we can see on the books here because there's no money in the treasury stock. Therefore, we have 50,000 shares outstanding. So it's gonna be a fairly uh, simple calculation. We're just gonna take, I'm gonna flip the sign by making a negative 50,000 shares uh, times two is that 100,000. Now we're gonna debit something for the same 100,000. And what are we gonna debit? We are going to debit retained earnings. So remember what dividends is, it's similar to like a draw for a sole proprietor where we are giving the money that has been earned by the company to the owners being in this case stockholders. Retained earnings represents the accumulation of that revenue over the life of the company that has not yet been distributed. It has a credit balance in it. We're gonna make it go down by doing the opposite thing to it and thereby distribute that value to the owners being the stockholders. So I'm gonna copy the retained earnings and paste that in H20, right click, paste it, one, two, three. Now the thing to, to note here is that uh, this, this we declared the same $2 dividend, but of course here we paid the 100 rather than the 90 when we declared a $2 dividend up here on January 2nd. The difference being is that when we declared this dividend up here, we had outstanding treasury stock. And when we declared this dividend down here, we don't have any outstanding treasury stock because we sold it back. All right, so let's post this out. So we're gonna post the uh, retained earnings. Here it is on the trial balance. Here's where we wanna post it in N14. We're gonna double click on that, go to the end of it and plus, and then point to this 100,000 in retained earnings and enter. Retained earnings goes down, we are out of balance. We're gonna post the common stock payable here and here's the common stock payable. We're gonna double click on N9, uh, double click, go to the end of it and plus, and point to this 100,000 credit, bringing the credit balance up in the credit direction to 100,000 and putting us back in balance down here.